What is going on all you Pokemon collecting maniacs out there? This is Ryan, the Pika Pika Papa, and just like every Sunday, today we're going to be talking about the biggest movers and shakers on TCG Player, and I love the fact that they send this list to us. This list is always a ton of fun to look at, and again, it's coming straight from TCG Player. They're the ones who are raising their hands saying, hey, listen, all you Pokemon collecting maniacs out there, you need to pay attention to these cards because they have been getting a lot of attention on our website, and as I always say, anytime I can get information from websites like eBay and TCG Player that have really high volume of buying and selling Pokemon cards. I think it's incredibly valuable and I love sharing it with you. Now, one of the things that I usually enjoy about this list is the fact that it has been so incredibly diverse. We have seen cards from different eras, different sets, all kinds of different Pokemon. Well, guess what? Spoiler alert, this is not the most diverse list we have seen uh, recently, to be honest with you. They're all Scarlet and Violet cards, which is not a bad thing. I'm loving that all these Scarlet and Violet cards are getting really hot. I think that Scarlet and Violet had some, some uh, particular sets that were flying under the radar a little bit, but now they're starting to get some love. So this image right here might be a little misleading because it so shows a whole lot of 151 cards. And while there is a 151 card on here, I am not showing all of them because I want to do a dedicated video on 151. 151 is just... I don't know what I can say about it I haven't said before. 151 is absolutely on fire. It is in a space all in of itself, and I think it is definitely worthy of, an o of its own video, which is going to be coming out here soon. So with that out of the way, as I said, we do this every single Sunday. So if you find this entertaining, if you love getting this information straight from TCG Player, hit that subscribe button. If you like what you see, give us a thumbs up, and if you have questions or comments, drop them down below. Now, with that out of the way, let's get into some of the cards that have been moving and shaking on TCG Player the most over the last week. Now, the first card on the list is a card you know I'm in love with and I think there's we got to kind of frame this up okay because when you look at this card as I always say when we go over this list you have the dark blue line right that is the price graph that shows you how the price has moved in this example over the last three months but then you have that light blue bar graph and that represents the number of cards that have sold over that particular period of time and this card has obviously spiked in price over the last week or so but you see the light blue line and how high it jumps? This was a buyout. There was a few number of people who went on TCG Player and bought all of these cards out that they could. They paid higher prices. They just wanted to get them all in their collection. Traditionally, what people do is it's not really collectors. People buy it out and then they hope to sell them at a higher price uh, immediately, if not at least for some period of time thereafter. But I have been in love with this Tyranitar card at the $25 mark for a very long time. This is one of the cards that I think in a year from now, two years from now, I'm going to look back on and there's going to be a lot of learnings, right? So Tyranitar, obviously, early gen Pokemon, big name Pokemon. We've had a big Tyranitar card in Sword and Shield era. Now this card right here from Paldea Evolved, right? This card has an incredibly low gem rate. It's in the high teens. You just don't see ultra modern cards with gem rates that low. The artwork is absolutely phenomenal. So I'm framing all of that up because yes, the price spike has been driven by a giant buyout. But what I'm wondering is, is it going to be able to hold on any of that spike? Is it going to end up settling back down in the $30 range? Remember, this was right at $27, $26 there. And I really like this card at $26, $27. It doesn't matter that there was a restock of Paldea Evolved Booster Boxes, right? We have seen the Paldea Evolved Booster Box price has already bounced back up from the little bit of a drop that it had. The set is special. The cards are really hard to get. There's a lot of Gen 1, Gen 2 Pokemon in this set. So I think Paldea Evolved has a very bright future. Yes, this is driven by a buyout, but it is certainly worth keeping an eye on over the next month to see if it's able to retain any of that spike that just recently happened because everybody bought all the cards on TCG Player. So I was really excited to see this card on the list. You know I got a lot of feelings about this. And again, in the long run, it's not about being right. It's not about being wrong. It's going to be what kind of lessons can we take away from this? Because there are going to be other cards in the future that are equally awesome that have equally low gem rates and so understanding how this one moves over time will give us a good idea of what that next set that goes through that exact same scenario will possibly look like. Keeping with Paldea Evolved, I told you there's a little bit of a narrow focus this month, or week, excuse me, the Magikarp card. And this is another one. Remember, when the booster boxes were restocked, everybody was like, oh my god, the Magikarp is going to crash back down. And we have seen its support at that $100 mark for a very, very long time. Has it come down off the $125 high that it was on not long ago? Absolutely. But when it got to $105, you see it immediately spiked back up. That is the type of support line that we love to see. Another card that, as you all know as well as I do, 
really low gem rate. This is a big, the big chase card from Paldea Evolved. And in my mind, this is going to be one of the big chase cards uh, from the entire Scarlet and Violet era. When you look at it, this set is over a year old. I mean, it's well over a year old. It's over a year and a half old at this point, right? And there is still less than 2,000 of these in PSA 10 holders out there. Just an incredibly hard card to get. Incredibly awesome art, right? Like, I love the way the black, the reds, the blue with the silver borders, they all kind of contrast with each other. It pops off the cardboard at you. I, I just think there's a whole lot to love about this card. I think it has a very bright future, and I am very, very, very excited to see the fact that this bounced up from the $105 mark. Is it going to stay in the 110s for a while? Who knows? It's already at 115 right now. I have no idea, but I do think that that is a very good sign, just like seeing those Paldea Evolved booster boxes bounce up after the restock. I think watching this card bounce back up after the little bit of market insanity, everybody talking about Paldea Evolved is a very good sign, because in the long run, I think there's a lot of really buttoned up investors and collectors out there who understand the artwork, understand Magikarp's a big name, understand the gem rate's really low, and I think they know that this value is going to continue to appreciate over time. So the next card that we're looking at right here, staying with Paldea Evolved. I know, three in a row, but Paldea Evolved has all kinds of interesting stuff going on in the market right now because of that influx uh, of booster boxes that we saw not long ago. But the Squawkabilly, I mean, really, if you look at this over the last three months, the price is up 55.6% over the last three months. So it doesn't matter that there was a restock of booster boxes. This price was already starting to get frothy uh, far before that. And Squawkabilly is a card list. Squawkabilly is a great playability card. And I also love the artwork on this. This is what I Love. I love it when there's a card that's highly playable and has absolutely amazing artwork to go along with it. And this checks all of those boxes right there. I have not checked the gem rate on this. Cards in the $15 range, cards driven by playability. I don't know how much long-term investment in collecting you know, value you're going to get out of this card, but the artwork is awesome. And again, you can't argue with what it has done over the last three months of 55.6%. So, and it doesn't see any slimes of slowing down, right? A lot of times when we do this video, you'll see that dark blue line start to kind of flatten off there at the end, but this one still looks like it's got some gas in the tank, so it'll be interesting to see how high this Squawkabilly card can get in the months ahead. The next card, we're finally getting off of the Paldea Evolved train, but we are still staying in Scarlet and Violet, and this is a card that was on the list last week, and the thing that I wanted to call out about this is if you look at the one month, one year trend right here, you'll see that it is up almost 90%, right? I mean, this was a $3 card back in the beginning of the year. It kind of worked its way down all the way through April. And really over the last four or five months is when it started to appreciate in price. But you'll see there in the far right, it's starting to come back down a little bit. But the thing that I wanted to call out and I added an extra graphic in here is it is flattening out, right? We just talked about that on the previous slide about how sometimes in these videos we'll see they spike in price, but they're starting to flatten out. Well, now this uh, pigeon right here is starting to flatten out a little bit. So it's going to be interesting to see if it can hold on to those gains. Again, it is up almost 90% over the last year. If it's able to hold on to some of those gains, I mean, that's a pretty good lesson right there. I mean, this card was a $3, $4 card 12 months ago. I get it. Obsidian Flames isn't going to be the best set in the entire Scarlet and Violet era. I know it's got Charizards all over the place, but even the big Charizard isn't that incredibly valuable coming in at, I don't know, in the $40, $40 range right now. But we will have to see because Obsidian Flames is another set that had incredibly low gem rates. Now, I don't think people are buying this card, getting it graded and investing in it because they think in the long run that PSA 10 Pidgey card is going to be worth $100. I just think this card's organically growing in price because it was way undervalued at the $3 mark. So I was really excited to see this card on here two weeks in a row. I love my man Pidgey getting a little bit of love here. So next card on the list, as always, we have our 151 card. There's a 151 card on this every single week. And the reason I didn't include all of them, because there were a couple 151 cards that were eligible, is as I said in the beginning, I really want to do a dedicated video around 151 because there's so much excitement. And the thing that's really, really exciting right now is if you look at this card, we have been monitoring 151 prices ever since it came out. And for most of the time, it has been working in between these support lines and resistance bands. Like it would have a support line. This card, for example, might have a support at $15, but then it had a lot of ceiling at $20. For most of the year, it was kind of bouncing up and down between that $15, $20 mark. But what we've seen over the last couple months, and not just in this card, but in a lot of the other 151 cards, is they're starting to break through that uh, resistance line at the very top. They're starting to hit new highs. They're starting to gain new ground. Uh, and that's really exciting. I think the window of opportunity to get some of these really awesome artwork, really big name Pokemon from the 151 set in this $20 range, I think the window of opportunity on that is going to continue to close. And I do think it's going to close at a rapid rate. So that's why I think it's time to do a video on it and kind of 
talk about, hey, listen, these are the cards that are in the $20, $25, $30 range. These are cards that I think have an incredible opportunity in the long run. These are cards that I think the window of opportunity to get them in that price range is rapidly closing. So we're going to do some content around it. I think it's going to be a ton of fun. But hey, this card right here, Ivysaur, again, it's going to get near that $25 mark. Is it going to be able to break above that? We talk about those support and resistance lines. And a lot of times they form in these, I don't know, round numbers or easy numbers around 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. It depends. Bigger cards, you know, usually settle around the $100, $50, stuff like that. So it's going to be interesting to see where these cards level out. And I can't wait to watch 151 over the next year and a half because I think this set is going to do absolutely amazing things. And I'm so excited to be around for, to be a part of it. So with that out of the way, these are the cards that have been moving and shaking on TCG Player over the last week. I hope you enjoyed this list. I hope you enjoyed this content. And if you did, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you like what you saw, give us a thumbs up. And if you have questions or comments, drop them down below. I hope you all have an epic one. And I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye.